Okay guys, this is the outfit of the day. This, it looks kind of like a wrap dress, but it is not. You can kind of see here, it's like all one piece. I hope you can see the anyway. It's all one piece, and then there's this little wrappy deal that hides the belly, which I really like. And I look for dresses like this all the time because, you know, at my age, if this was not wrapped here, then, uh, you know, my belly would show. And I, you guys, I do have a belly. I'm going to tell you guys, honestly, this is bordering on hoochie cougar. You guys know how I always say that I am conscious of that, that I don't, I don't want to look hoochie cougar, but I figure it's really close. It's right there at my kneecap. So like if it was, you know, up here, I would say that would not be the one, but I feel like it's long enough. It's flowy. It's a little bit more fitted than I want, but you, I'm working today. I'm going to try to find this so that anybody who's interested can buy it. And by the way, if I always link everything below now, I have a beauty and clothing and kind of like my favorite things, um, page. So that's always linked below now. So if I can't find this exact dress, I will find something similar that has the same stretch, the same material, hopefully something that will fit you similar. And again, you guys, I am five foot four and I am as of today, 156.4 pounds. So I am no uh, skinny mini at all. This dress hides a plethora of issues. So these are the kind I look for. So today is just a regular day. I'm showing condos in a golf course community. And oh, these shoes, I wanna show you these too. Super comf, because I'm gonna be doing a lot of walking. Here we go. Cause I'm gonna be doing a lot of walking. You know, I like to get a little bit of height. And also this is another one of my tricks. If you go with a nude color as close to your skin tone as you can, it lengthens your legs. I don't have long legs. I'm only 5'4", so anything I can do, right? So I never do white. It's, I don't think I've ever worn a pair of white shoes. I'll do cream, you know, but I'll do off-white, but I prefer cork or nude. Okay, this is what I'm calling nude, like this, because it just, it really lengthens your, I don't know, your whole look. Anyway outfit of the day. Good morning, everyone. Can you guys tell I'm super self-conscious in that dress? You know, you guys have seen me here on YouTube for like three years now, and I don't wear stuff that's body fitting, especially coming off a weight gain. But you know what? I'm going to rock it. I'm going to do my best because I don't know, every now and then you just kind of want to change it up a little bit. So you guys, I know, will give me your opinion down below in the comments. Good or bad, I can take it. All right, so speaking of that weight gain that I had, now if you watched my weigh-in from Wednesday, you know that I lost 1.6 pounds. So just for those of you that did not watch that video, please jump back a couple videos and you'll see how I gained the weight. And now I'm back on track, you know, getting serious again. Weight loss is kind of like this and that's okay, but I'm ready to, to take this off. And I'm really gonna strive for goal this next, you know, from now through to the end of summer. I mean, I'm always striving for goal, but really, you know, you guys know what I mean. There are times when you're a little bit lapsed with yourself and other times where, you know, you're really going for it. So I am in really going for it mode. So I thought, you know, coming off of that eight pound weight gain, I thought it would really be interesting and hopefully helpful for you guys to kind of talk through what I learned from that. Because if you don't learn anything at all from your weight gain, when you have, you know, sort of when you go off track, why you went off track, how you can get back on track, then what's the point? Like we have to learn from our mistakes. You guys know what I'm talking about. So these are the top five things, epiphanies that I have had based on this recent weight gain. Okay, so in no particular order, number one, sugar is absolutely not my friend, still my enemy, and I am just not a person that can have really more than a limited amount of sugar. Now, in all fairness, I have been allowing a lot of things that I would normally not allow in, like 
processed carbs, things like those veggie straws that I eat. And you know, things that you get in the middle section of the grocery store, the pantry items that you know, like they're snacky, they're crunchy, whatever, you know, you can do it differently with carrots and cucumbers. And you know, there's foods that are naturally salty. There's all kinds of ways that you can get, you know, sort of your fix on that kind of thing without going through those middle aisles. But on WW, we can eat whatever we want. And so I kind of took that and ran with it and I ate whatever I wanted. That does not work for me. I am not a person that can, and keep in mind, I'm not talking about just like brownies, cookies, cupcakes, which I love. I'm not talking about just that. I am talking about processed carbs that turn into sugar in your body. I mean, a saltine, if you leave it in your mouth long enough, it'll taste like sugar, at least it does for me. So I realized through this that when I allow a little bit of sugar in, if I say it's not a big deal, I'm gonna a piece of birthday cake. It's not a big deal, I'm gonna have a cupcake. It is a big deal for me. And the reason is my body just keeps craving it. If I have one cupcake, my body every day that I wake up will say, you can have a cupcake, why don't you have a cupcake? That one cupcake isn't making anybody fat. Well, guess what? It, it is for me and it raises insulin. It's not good for your sugar levels, for me anyway. And no, I just, I gotta stay away from it to the best of my ability. Not, you know, completely eliminate it, but I really do have to watch it. Okay, number two. I realized that I eat when I'm happy. I am not one of those people that will run to comfort food when I'm sad. When I'm sad, are upset or feeling sort of a depression or gloomy or dark or whatever, I tend to not eat. I can tend to just kind of go off on my own, work like crazy, and I don't eat. But when I'm happy, I eat, I want to eat. It's just kind of like the way I was brought up. You know, when we get together as a family, we eat. And that, you know, when I'm happy, it reminds me of happy times and I eat. So again, that's something that I really have to be aware of and watch. You don't always have to eat just because you're happy and in a good mood. And the thing is, I'm generally happy. I really like my life. So for me, that, that can be pretty dangerous. Number three, and along those lines, for me, family equals good food equals problems and weight gain. That's just the truth. That's the way it is for me. So whenever I get together with my family, it is always based around food. Everybody came in town a couple weeks ago. What are we doing? You know, let's go out to eat. Let's cook. Let's all cook together. You know, everybody, all the women in my family, just about all the women, love to cook. And we don't cook low calorie. We don't cook WW friendly. I do. So a lot of you guys know I come from a big Italian family and we love to cook. We love to eat. The women in my family love to to cook and sort of like critique each other's food. My sister is a great cook. My other sister is awesome with like certain dishes. She nails it, everybody wants her to bring those dishes. Like everyone loves to cook and then kind of get, what did you think? Was it good? Like if my sister made bad spadini like four years ago, chicken spadini, and she talks about it to this day. So. My point is that when I get together with family, which I do often, as often as possible, you know, I, I'm here in Florida by myself with only very limited family. So that food thing is not as sort of intimidating, but when I'm at home in St. Louis, it is. Like there is opportunity to cook or go out to eat weekly and more than once a week. So what I've realized is I have to have things that I can do with my family that are not all based around food. So for example, a couple weeks ago where my eight pound weight gain came from, my family came into town, all of us got together and we ate a lot of good food and I did not track. Did I go crazy? I did not. I was on track for breakfast and lunch every single day and I still gained eight pounds. That just shows me that I have to stay on track. I can't go all out of bounds and off the rails at one meal. It will affect me. I will gain weight. It just tells me that I'm really consuming a lot of calories at that last meal, the dinner meal. And I did have dessert. I talked to you guys about that. So, you know, for me, the times that family comes in, I have to be able to say, let's go to the beach. Let's go shelling. 
Let's go do something different. Let's do, you know, there's so much to do in Florida. We don't have to end the day with a massive plate of lasagna, spaghetti, meatballs, and tiramisu. We don't have to do that. Okay, next one, number four. Overeating, gaining weight, eating off track. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. And I know that you guys always say, you know, put it in its place. Food is just food. It's a journey. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I get it, but this is real life. I don't feel good about myself when I eat like that. When I, so this is what I do. Let's say I have an off track day and I make a split second unconscious decision to get in the pantry and eat a few handfuls of tortilla chips and then I've blown the day. So I might as well go ahead and make that box of cake mix that I've been having in there. And I know it's way in the back. I might as well make that because I already blew it. When I wake up the next morning, I feel very bad about myself. Like I, the self-talk is horrifying. I say things to myself that are like, I, I mean, it just, uh, you just shrink into your mood. And I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to feel that way. And guess what? I have control over that. It is, it is just food. It really is just food. And I should have enough control when I'm heading for that pantry and I'm craving something salty. You know what it is? Salt, fat, sugar. That is the unholy trinity. Salt, fat, sugar. That's what I crave. So when I'm doing that and I'm going to just start jamming that in unconsciously, I have to be able to take a step back. There is always that split second where you can go, no, you are going to feel terrible about yourself. Do not do it. Okay, and then the last one, again, along those lines, I have realized that when I do that, so when I came off that eight pound weight gain and I got on the scale and realized, you know, kind of did a, a surveilling of the damage to, because I didn't get on the scale for two weeks. When I saw that it was eight pounds, you know what I did? And this is hard to admit that this is reality, you guys. And I wonder if you guys do the same thing. When I start feeling bad about myself and feeling down and feeling, you know, saying all those terrible, ugly things to myself in my mind, I project that out into the world. I project that negative energy out onto other people, you know, like Kevin, I mean, truthfully, and anybody else I'm around. And I have to say to myself, these people don't care what you just did. These people don't care you put eight pounds in two weeks. These people, you owe the world outside of yourself to be a decent human being and not take out, don't project your bad mood because of your food choices onto other people. Do you guys do that? I do that. And that was an epiphany for me. So I'm not going to do that anymore. I got to get that under control. That just, that doesn't work. You know, and I guess as a bonus, lastly, maybe number six, is that I have realized I still have a lot to overcome. I think this really, truly is going to be a lifelong run for me. You know, I... You work at it every day, you make improvements, you have setbacks, you make improvements from that. And I guess life is all about learning from, you know, the, the wins and the failures in your life. So I've really realized that I have a lot to overcome if I am going to maintain a healthy weight that I feel good about. I'm going to get these things under control. So I hope that that was helpful for you guys. Let me know down in the comments. What have you learned during your weight gain? I would love to know. And if we have enough comments below, you know, everybody posts one or two things, then maybe I'll do another video and I'll read all those out. And maybe that will help all of us as a community.